Welcome to the international launch of the Media and Information Literacy Curriculum for Educators and Learners organized by the Ministry of Culture and Media of Republic of Serbia and UNESCO with support of European Commission and Sweden. My name is Zoran Stanevic and I will be your host today here at the premises of Radio Television of Serbia. Today we have two panel discussions on this issue. The first one is about necessity for media and information literacy and the need for national policies and international cooperation. The panelists are Mrs. Audrey Azoulay, Director General of UNESCO. She will be joining us by video message. Mr. Chu Jing, Deputy Director General of UNESCO. Mrs. Anna Brnabic, Prime Minister of the Republic of Serbia. Mrs. Vera Jurova, Vice President and Commissioner of the European Commission. Her Excellency, Dr. Monique Zanzabagamba, Deputy Chairperson of the African Union Commission. Thank you all for accepting to participate in this discussion. Rapid technological transformations have completely appended the ways people interact, communicate and access information about the world. It brought us unimaginable benefits, but it also created similarly unwanted consequences such as misinformation, disinformation, hate speech, and an often toxic environment hostile to constructive discussion. Before we hear the message from Ms. Audrey, Mrs. Audrey Azoulay, Director General of UNESCO, allow me to give floor to Mr. Chu Zing, Deputy Director General of UNESCO. Thank you, Your Excellency, Ms. Anna Branabic, Prime Minister of Serbia. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to introduce to you today the video message by the Director General of UNESCO, Ms. Audrey Azoulay. Media and information literacy has the potential to empower citizens with the necessary competencies to address key issues of our time. The timeliness and the relevance of the updated media and information literacy curriculum that we are launching here today are particularly brought to the fore in the context of the disinfodemic that has swirled around the COVID-19 pandemic. The global rise in misinformation, disinformation and hate speech demonstrate the urgency of strengthening critical thinking in our society. I wish to thank all UNESCO member states regional organizations and other key partners that have responded to our call to action in this regard and who are actively engaging with UNESCO and with their local partners to promote MIL on the global, regional and national levels. In particular, I wish to recognize the support from Australia, Costa Rica, Finland, Japan, Lebanon, the Republic of Korea, the Republic of Serbia, South Africa, Sweden, and the European Commission. Thank you for helping us advance the vision of media and information literacy for everyone and by everyone. Special thanks should go to the Prime Minister Anna Brnabic. Your presence at this ceremony demonstrates once again the importance that Serbian government has been attaching to the media and the information literacy that is crucial for today's, today's world that goes through a digital transformation. On this note, I wish you fruitful deliberations and now invite you to listen to the words of Ms. Audrey Azoulay, the Director General of UNESCO. Thank you for your attention. Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs, chers amis, il paraît que boire beaucoup d'eau chaude avec du sel et du vinaigre permet d'éliminer le virus du Covid-19 avant qu'il n'infecte vos poumons. Il paraît aussi que ce virus n'existe pas vraiment et que le vaccin à ARN messager modifie votre ADN. Vous l'avez compris, vous le savez, toutes ces informations sont fausses. Et pourtant, oh, on DNA. À peine au début de la crise, 
Of course, this information is false, and yet in just a few weeks in the crisis, this information was shared hundreds of thousands of times on social media. The uh, American writer Mark Twain said, a lie can travel halfway around the world and back again while the truth is lacing up its boots. That is one of the underlying constants of this pandemic, any pandemics, the Black Plague, the cholera, and others. As the Senegalese uh, uh, scientist wrote, uh, Droma Dramé, she wrote, the desire to believe, particularly in a time of crisis, can carry over the, uh, the uh, desire for what is real. This might sound comical, but it is not comical, because uh, if we undermine the uh, validity of science, we are putting lives at in danger, unable to actually make the difference between what is true, what is untrue, what is a rumor, what is a fact, uh, is something that today must we must do away with. We have to be able to save lives and to uphold democracy. We must verify sources. We must have a critical eye on the information that is uh, digital. And in order to do so, we have to understand the mechanisms of how the digital world works, protect one's uh, private life as well as facts. And all of these are things that can be learned. This is what's at stake in the uh, education for uh, media and uh, information, media literacy and information. If we work on our critical minds, this uh, literacy is a vital uh, skill for citizens of the 21st century. To actually uh, build a critical way of thinking is the best way to actually fight against rumors and against uh, uh, conspiracy theories. We all know that uh, wanting to prevent uh, the spreading of fake news by suppressing information or dismantling websites cannot be a long-lasting solution. Uh, we are always running behind uh, lies. We never manage to catch up neither to lies nor rumors. And sometimes it can be counterproductive to try to do away with them with a counter-argument because the counter-argument will just fuel the fire. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. That is why the launch of our curriculum for educators and learners, Think Critically, Click Wisely, is so important. Of course, it does not come out of nowhere. UNESCO's work in this field began in 1982 at the Conference on Media Education in Grunwald in Germany. But even then, we knew that media education was not given enough space in curricula. In 2011, the launch of our first curriculum for educators marked another important milestone. This uh, curriculum, available in 12 languages, is still in high demand and a very valuable resource for education systems. But it was launched 10 years ago, a century ago in Internet terms. Since 2011, Internet users have doubled in number, jumping from 2.2 billion people to 4.1 billion today. But in parallel, we have become more aware of the impact of misinformation on democracy and social cohesion. Sophisticated and intrusive algorithms have emerged, along with deep fakes and other digital illusions. It was therefore essential to launch a new curriculum in response to these new challenges. Two years ago, in September 2019, I had uh, the honor to visit Belgrade to welcome the start of these reflections. This is the outcome of two years of work and consultations carried out around the world to reflect the diversity of our membership. I wish to commend the commitment of the Republic of Serbia and very particularly the commitment of its Prime Minister, Anna Runabic. This curriculum will address new issues like privacy, data protection and digital citizenship while expanding its focus on areas such as artificial intelligence and hate speech. The curriculum also lays the foundations for the inclusion of these topics in education systems across the globe. UNESCO will work with relevant authorities to make this possible, as well as with educators who play, as always, a crucial role. While classrooms are important areas for action, we cannot uh, limit this learning to just pupils and schools. We must also reach the entire population, not only students, and target places where false information proliferates, especially social networks. 
To do this, we must work with major digital firms in particular. This is the goal of the online courses we have developed, which will be launched in several languages in cooperation with our partners. We have also uh, developed a free uh, to access educational platform on our website, pulling teaching resources on this topic. As we rely on pedagogy to end hate speech, disinformation and other abuses in the digital world, we're crafting humanistic solutions to respond to the challenges of the 21st century. Thus, we must reinforce the absolute necessity that our world must be built on humanism. This means valuing intelligence and taking an objective, impartial approach to new technologies. It means putting confidence in people and democracy over technology. In these critical times, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, dear friends, we need more than ever critical minds. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. This was the message from Mrs. Audrey Azoulay, Azoulay Director General of UNESCO. The COVID-19 pandemic increased both the good and the bad in the communication ecology. Therefore, we need effective development interventions that can help people to benefit more from the good and at the same time self-protect from and minimize the impact of the bad. What is Serbia's contribution to media literacy and what challenges pandemics brought? We will hear from Prime Minister of Serbia, Mrs. Ana Brnabic, who is joining us now. Mrs. Brnabic, why exactly is Serbia organizing this conference? Hello, Zoran. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to be one of the hosts of, these, uh, of this conference. Obviously, you know, we're hosting it together with UNESCO and uh, I have to thank again uh, the whole UNESCO team and, uh, and the director of the Azule for all of their work, all of their collaboration uh, with us on this important topic. Um, we have been collaborating very closely with UNESCO in launching this new curriculum for critical uh, thinking. And uh, as, as Ms. Azule said, we have been uh, working on, uh, on, on this since uh, 2019, um, which resulted basically in the creation of the Belgrade guidelines for drafting global standards for curricula for media and information uh, literacy, which were presented at the 40th session of the UNESCO General Conference in 2020. Uh, additionally, also the Minister of Culture and Information of the Republic of Serbia last year created guidelines for media literacy and uh, held number of workshops on media literacy for teachers and, and parents. Uh, and today, together with UNESCO, um, uh, we are hosts of this, of this event and we are la launching the second edition of UNESCO curriculum for media and information literacy. Uh, as, we as, as we already heard, uh, it's called Think Critically, Click Wisely. Uh, this curriculum is de designed to provide individuals and educators with the tools to gain information, media and digital competencies in order to be truly able uh, to interpret and evaluate content, promoting media and information literacy as a foundation uh, to live by. Uh, we live uh, in uh, very complex and very difficult times, um, not just because of COVID, but simply be also because of the fact that, uh, that fake news make um, uh, fight against COVID uh, twice as difficult. Uh, similarly, as uh, would be the case with any other uh, crisis. So again, we are very, very proud to be able to host this conference, to work with uh, the UNESCO team, and, and also to, to, to show uh, somewhat of a leadership role in this in this important uh, uh, topic. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Prime Minister, you already mentioned it, uh, but how pandemic affected this already complicated issue? What were the new challenges you had to deal with, con with concerning media literacy due to the pandemic and vaccination process in Serbia? As, as I said, I think uh, fighting COVID uh, and uh, alongside in parallel with that, having to fight uh, all of the fake news that uh, were coming up uh, on a daily basis, uh, both from some uh, media outlets as well as, uh, um, and perhaps much more so from the social networks 
uh, meant that uh, that for all of those involved in the in this fight against COVID, the, the struggle was twice as difficult. Meaning that we could probably uh, have done more and perhaps even a better job in saving lives of the people if um, if we did not have to fight the fake news. Uh, now, how to deal uh, with the fake news in a, in a manageable and sustainable way really, in my view, is only through through one thing, educating people uh, and especially investing in youth education, uh, teaching kids how to think critically, how to question information, um, how to think for themselves, how to have analytical thinking. All of these things become more and more important to invest in as we go uh, forward to the future. Thank you, Mrs. Prime Minister. This was Prime Minister of Serbia, Mrs. Anna Brnabic. Media and information literacy is a sustainable way to empower everyone with competencies to better navigate the information superhighway. I would kindly invite Mrs. Vera Jourova, Vice President and Commissioner of the European Commission, to share her views on this matter. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Prime Minister, Madam Deputy Chairwoman of the African Union Commission, Mr. Deputy Director General of UNESCO, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure for me to participate in this event. And I first would like to start my, by congratulating UNESCO and Serbia and all those involved in this new updated version of the information and media literacy curriculum. It is a very important resource and I am happy to contribute to its promotion. As it was noted, the digital revolution brought tremendous changes into our lives in the ways we communicate and we conduct business and do politics even. It is crucial to support educators and learners, especially in this very difficult period, so that everyone is equipped to assess critically the content that they receive and share in, all, in other words, to think before they click. And this is more important than ever in the current pandemic, which has been accompanied by the infodemic. A flood of information about the virus often forced or dangerous spreading quickly online. And as the prime minister has just confirmed, it made the work of those who were saving lives, lives and health of people much more difficult. And by the way, congratulations Serbia for such a good progress on vaccination. We are thinking about the people of Serbia as those who, who might get soon out, out of the crisis. Uh, but coming back to, to the bad things, uh, this information in, in the COVID time, it is obvious that our health is at stake, but also the health of our societies, of our democracies. And this is why media literacy is at the heart of our recently adopted European Democracy Action Plan. So let me say a few words about this plan. This is our response to recent disturbing developments in Europe, and its aim is to improve the resilience of our democracies. It is built on three pillars. First is securing free and fair elections. Second, strengthening media freedom and ability to work. And the third, fighting disinformation. We want to ensure that citizens in the EU can make informed choices and vote freely on the basis of facts and without manipulation. This means that they need to have the right skills, check information before sharing it, understand who is behind the information, why it was distributed to them and whether it is at all credible. Today, in the European Union, over 40% of young people consider that critical thinking, media and democracy are not taught sufficiently in school. This is why we are now increasing our efforts to support media literacy through various funding instruments and initiatives, and even via EU law. Our revised audiovisual rules require EU member states to promote the development of media literacy skills. It also obliges video sharing platforms to set up effective media literacy measures and tools to raise users' awareness of those measures and tools. To help turn these requirements into reality, 
We are now working with partners, including media regulators and stakeholders on a toolbox. We are working with teachers and educators too. We are supporting the so-called e-twinning platform for teachers across Europe to communicate, collaborate and develop projects. This year, the priority is media literacy and the fight against disinformation. We have also recently published a so-called spot and fight disinformation toolkit to help teachers teach their students how to protect themselves as well as their friends and family from misinformation and disinformation. The toolkit is available in all EU languages. And of course, international cooperation plays a key role and this is why it is so important for me to be here with you. I know UNESCO and the Commission are working hand in hand on all these initiatives. We also have joint projects in Serbia. The EU also supports media literacy through several projects in African countries. And it is really crucial that we join forces as we face the same global issues. I am also looking forward to new cooperation with the United States, by the way, but we are at the, at the start of the new chapter now. As a symbol of the closer cooperation, which I have just described, I am pleased that for the first time, our European Media Literacy Week and UNESCO Media Literacy Week will take place together at the end of October this year to ensure a greater impact. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am really looking forward to continuing the cooperation on such an extremely important topic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Vice President. This was Mrs. Vera Jourova, Vice President and Commissioner of the European Commission. As we can see today, it is very important that there is a comprehensive tool to help us all navigate media and digital environment. And we gathered to announce the importance of having media information literacy curriculum, an international and foundational tool to guide all stakeholders. I would kindly invite uh, Mrs. Her Excellency Dr. Monique Zanzabaganva, Deputy Chairperson of the African Union Commission, to share her views with us. Good morning, good afternoon. Greetings, everyone. And thank you for inviting uh, the African Union Commission to this important international launch of the Media and Information Literacy Curriculum for Educators and Learners organized by UNESCO, one of our close partners. I recognize you, Excellencies, the Prime Minister of Serbia, the Deputy Director General of UNESCO, the Vice President and Commissioner of the European Union Commission, distinguished participants. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to join you on this important occasion. Uh, as I respond to moderator's invitation, I wish to make three points. Uh, the first one is really to congratulate uh, uh, everyone who has uh, played a role on this um, timely introduction of such a useful tool as the media and information literacy curriculum for educators and learners. This launch is happening at a critical time when the COVID-19 pandemic has severely disrupted our learning systems and pushed millions of learners out of brick and mortar classrooms. As you strive to build back better and get learners and educators onto digital channels, including in rural and remote areas as much as we can, we must also endeavor to address the nascent media and information literacy challenges the world in general and Africa in particular are facing. My uh, message uh, number two is to stress the paramount importance of enhancing literacy in general and building skills to think critically about media and information 
in the digital area in particular. And this is true of especially our uh, African uh, context. Literacy is fundamental for the active participation of young people, men and women in building knowledge-based societies. Again here, COVID-19 offers a case in point. We have seen health literacy take center stage as um, a foundation on which citizens are enabled to play an active role in improving their own health and that of their communities. That's why the African Union Commission has been at the forefront in promoting literacy in Africa, to which the coronavirus outbreak provided us with a rapid learning experience. Therefore, focusing on media information literacy is in full alignment with one of the strategic objectives of our continental education strategy for Africa, with which uh, UNESCO has uh, collaborated uh, with us to, 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 to have in place. And this is uh, uh, one of the objectives speaking to launching a comprehensive and effective literacy programs across the continent to eradicate the scourge of illiteracy. So the media and information literacy curriculum is one way learners can interact with information. And they can do so guided by their teachers who can help encourage creative and critical thinking about what is being seen and the type of information that can be absorbed. I believe that in times like this, when digital technology is becoming more important and you have discussions of fake news or alternative facts in the social media and beyond, on such sensitive issues as COVID-19 vaccines, genocide ideology, hate speech, gender-based criminal acts, etc., it's very important than ever to work on such a curriculum. Education should more actively help learners to develop the ability to critically approach, filter, and assess information, and more importantly, to identify misinformation. Um, my last message is that online and offline safety is paramount in achieving this. As more children use the internet for learning, they become increasingly vulnerable to online forms of exploitation and abuse. I can take this opportunity to pledge that we are going to uh, work with member states to embrace this initiative because uh, as Linda LRB once said, and I quote, media literacy is not just important, it's absolutely critical. It's going to make the difference between whether kids are a tool of mass media or whether mass media is a tool for kids to use. As I conclude, I would like to once again congratulate you on the launch of this media and information literacy curriculum for educators and learners and for the important work you're doing to protect our educators and learners. And I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, thank you, Your Excellency. This was Dr. Monique Zazambagamba, uh, the Deputy Chairperson of the African Union Commission. Many thanks to our panelists. We got many useful information and ideas. After a 15 minutes break, we will have another panel on how to implement the curriculum. Let me remind you again where to look for curriculum. You will see the address on the screen. Stay with us, see you in 15 minutes.
The way we create and consume information has changed significantly in recent years. Today, more than half of the world's population, including over 70% of all youth globally, are online. But how can we make sure that all information is used for public good? To promote dialogue and respect, support SDGs and democracy, and empower lifelong learners. Instead of breeding hate speech, disinformation, fake news, and privacy violations, Media and information literacy is designed to combat these challenges and enable people to better benefit from positive opportunities. It gives individuals the skills to interpret and understand information, to think critically and click wisely, both on and offline. UNESCO has launched the second edition of the Mill Curriculum for educators and learners. It provides a comprehensive framework for information, media and digital competencies. So, individuals can spot misinformation and engage positively in society. It's not just a framework, but a foundation to live by. To help make sense of ever-changing information-based influences, by becoming media and information literate citizens, we are empowered to make the right choices. Learn more about media and information literacy and how it can support citizens to think critically and click wisely on and offline. The way we create and consume information has changed significantly in recent years. Today, more than half of the world's population, including over 70% of all youth globally, are online. But how can we make sure that all information is used for public good? To promote dialogue and respect, support SDGs and democracy, and empower lifelong learners. Instead of breeding hate speech, disinformation, fake news, and privacy violations, media and information literacy is designed to combat these challenges and enable people to better benefit from positive opportunities. It gives individuals the skills to interpret and understand information think critically and click wisely, both on and offline. UNESCO has launched the second edition of the Mill Curriculum for educators and learners. It provides a comprehensive framework for information, media and digital competencies. So, individuals can spot misinformation and engage positively in society. It's not just a framework, but a foundation to live by. To help make sense of ever-changing information-based influences by becoming media and information literate citizens, we are empowered to make the right choices. Learn more about media and information literacy and how it can support citizens to think critically and click wisely on and offline.
The way we create and consume information has changed significantly in recent years. Today, more than half of the world's population, including over 70% of all youth globally, are online. But how can we make sure that all information is used for public good? To promote dialogue and respect, support SDGs and democracy, and empower lifelong learners. Instead of breeding hate speech, disinformation, fake news and privacy violations, Media and information literacy is designed to combat these challenges and enable people to better benefit from positive opportunities. It gives individuals the skills to interpret and understand information, to think critically and click wisely, both on and offline. UNESCO has launched the second edition of the Mill Curriculum for educators and learners. It provides a comprehensive framework for information, media and digital competencies. So, individuals can spot misinformation and engage positively in society. It's not just a framework, but a foundation to live by. To help make sense of ever-changing information-based influences, by becoming media and information literate citizens, we are empowered to make the right choices. Learn more about media and information literacy and how it can support citizens to think critically and click wisely on and offline.
Welcome to the second panel on Media and Information Literacy Curriculum for Educators and Learners organized by the Ministry of Culture and Media of Republic of Serbia and UNESCO with support of European Commission and Sweden. I'm Zoran Stanevic, journalist at Radio Television of Serbia. In previous panel, we discussed the necessity for the curriculum we are presenting today. On this panel, we will talk about its future implementation. Let me present the panelists. Mrs. Stefania Giannini, Assistant Director General for Education, UNESCO. And Mrs. Gordana Tromic, Minister for Human Rights and Minority Rights and Social Dialogue, Republic of Serbia. Welcome to, welcome to uh, Radio Television uh, Serbia studio. Uh, I will first ask uh, uh, Mrs. Giannini to start with some opening remarks on this issue. Thanks. Uh, uh, good afternoon uh, to everybody. And let me first of all thank uh, the Republic of Serbia for co-hosting uh, this important event. Uh, well, uh, the, the, the digital revolution uh, is uh, definitely accelerating uh, uh, the, the process uh, which uh, was already uh, running before this unprecedented uh, crisis we are living. And uh, resilience uh, uh, today is a word, uh, uh, is a key word of the recovery. And this includes uh, resilience for fear. Uh, this includes uh, putting education on the front line and taking a, a new collective responsibility uh, to transform society through education. And uh, uh, to that hand, uh, I think it's important that education uh, develops uh, uh, some specific targets of the SDG4, uh, as, uh, uh, such as uh, global education citizenship, which uh, is about uh, giving learners uh, all the tools uh, they need to understand uh, the current context, the complexity of the day, of, the, of, the, of, the, of these times, uh, through critical thinking, through the ability to distinguish between, between the fake news uh, and the truth, uh, the ability to navigate uh, uh, in the complexity of, uh, of the narrative they find uh, on social media, so it's a new responsibility that education systems have. And of course, uh, this uh, quite time, timely uh, curriculum uh, uh, we are presenting and launching today is very much about providing uh, uh, the ecosystem of education uh, a new important concrete tool in order to, uh, to, give, uh, to provide a, a young generation uh, uh, this uh, this important uh, uh, this important uh, mindset they need, and this is very much about uh, addressing the challenge today and opening doors for uh, a future a future where uh, um, young people must really be uh, critical thinkers, uh, uh, you know, uh, citizens who understand uh, uh, their contest and are able to act responsibly and to, and to transform society. Uh, they are, young generation are truly the game changers. And I think education uh, is very much uh, the treasure we can uh, provide to them in order to, to, to implement uh, this new responsibility. Thank you. Thank you for this opening. How can we empower citizens to be media and information literate? Who are the partners? How to implement it in the, in the national education systems? Those are the issues we are discussing on this panel. And may I start with the first question for Mrs. Giannini. Why is the implementation of basic standards in this area so important? Mm. Just, uh, yes, Can microphone on, please. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry for that. Uh, as already said, uh, go, what we can call globalization 4.0, uh, uh, you know, the disruptive uh, uh, technological revolution uh, we already lived before the pandemic, uh, is, is, is actually redefining uh, every dimension of society. And uh, for uh, and it's about a new kind of uh, 
uh, international cooperation model we need. It's about, it's about a new kind of uh, political commitment for governments uh, to address the new challenges we have. And digital citizenship is, uh, uh, is a very, at the very core of this new agenda we, we need. And this is a digital citizenship, so, so to say, has become a, a new democratic imperative and uh, an educational one. Uh, I mentioned uh, already the importance of uh, global education citizenship as part of, uh, of the uh, SDG4, uh, the 2030 agenda, as a real cross-cutting dimension uh, through uh, education uh, to many other goals. And uh, education today has uh, the responsibility to give every learner the capacity to be responsible uh, and to be uh, responsible digital citizens. How can we do that? And how this uh, curriculum uh, can be uh, implemented effectively? Well, I see basically two uh, important dimensions. The first one uh, takes uh, uh, an enabling system uh, to bring a curriculum uh, to life. And this curriculum treads on sensitive and complex territory. We must be very clear, we must be very honest. It calls for spaces of dialogue in schools, uh, but it's also beyond uh, the classroom uh, for training teachers, educators, uh, uh, and this means uh, supporting uh, teachers and educators uh, to implement uh, uh, such, a, it's such a complex uh, uh, agenda. And the second dimension uh, uh, to, I want to, 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 to underline, uh, which is vital, which is important to implement effectively the media literacy curriculum, is about uh, um, uh, building a systematic, um, uh, implementing a systematic capacity building uh, uh, for school leaders, teachers, and educators. And uh, I should say that they need the tools, they need the practice, uh, they need the right training in order they can be uh, well equipped uh, to help uh, students fast check information, research uh, opposing and diverse opinions. So to say, this complex uh, navigating in the in the in the uh, narrative that uh, they find. Uh, uh, in the day-by-day -day life uh, online, especially, it's very crucial uh, to, to, to be addressed by, by the right tools. Uh, and this is why uh, guidance is so important. This is why uh, e e education ecosystem must uh, really embed this uh, uh, agenda into their own uh, roadmap. And this is why I think uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of new uh, partnership which puts together governments, ministries, uh, and ministers of, of education, of course, uh, and other uh, related uh, political responsibilities with educators teachers, communities, uh, and the private sector. A few words on this last point. I think the private sector today has a huge responsibility to share. Uh, the so-called big tech uh, are very much, uh, uh, can be part of the solution, uh, but uh, also uh, can be part of the problem. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we, we, we see a new horizon of, uh, uh, you know, putting together uh, in, in a unique and, uh, and, uh, and the joint effort uh, all the, the, the resources we have, uh, expertise uh, and also ethical principles in order to address uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this issue. Mrs. Minister, uh, how can we, how, how can Serbia link its experience and knowledge with what UNESCO is, is proposing. What is the idea? The idea is uh, exactly what's going on uh, nowadays here in the RTS, but also in 27, 28. We are partners and supporters and with clear commitment to, to do something to decrease what I call uh, internet pollution 
verbal pollution of the digital space that a lot of human beings uh, successfully spread around as well as in reality that soil, air and water are polluted with hate speech, with uh, fake news, with conspiracy theories, with just a lot of people on digital sphere having fun to hurt someone. Uh, that is what is going on in front of our eyes. And what Serbia wants to do is uh, let's uh, do something and decrease that pollution. Let's do uh, it with the, 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 the might tool that is education. That's why we think that that kind of uh, uh, people get educated in the formal system is necessary. That's why I think that the previous manual, so-called, of the media and information uh, literacy is, is so good for all of us who hate uh, to see uh, that uh, internet polluted with, uh, with the garbage, with verbal garbage, with, with the verbal images that are also garbage. And we can do it through our primaries and high school, but I think that we can also do it through non-formal way, uh, through campaign or in cooperation with uh, socially responsible companies. So I don't see why in the pack of tobacco where it's clearly and truly written that it endangers your lungs and your life shouldn't be assigned. The hate speech is not uh, freedom of speech. The hate speech hurts someone, as well as other products that young people uh, uh, use very often. I don't know what, like chewing gum and paper bag or whatever, because we need uh, to build up skills uh, and resilience among young people who are there on digital sphere because when they were born internet was there and they don't they don't know that there was a planet without internet like me and you not knowing that there was planet without electricity so for them to 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 be educated with simple message we know that there is always be people who want to pollute digital space with verbal garbage but there are rules that will stay a very clear statement with a very clear statement that those people can continue to think that they can pollute, but they cannot really behave because they will not have an audience. You, leave, you, leave them without the audience. You mentioned the word digital many times. Yep. Is this solely digital? Uh, it's, uh, I think not. I think that uh, what was going on as, as a, a digital pollution of, of verbal garbage and hate speech and racism and everything what we are witnessing every day, that must be resolved in, in physical contact in schools, in, um, in media, uh, with uh, dialogue, uh, different people, a uh, group of people who do not understand what is wrong with mocking someone, with smear campaign, with hurting someone, with promoting racism, with, uh, with hate speech. So what, 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 what's wrong with that? So get them in this studio, let's have seven or eight physically in contact and uh, try to reach uh, uh, each other with clear message of uh, what is freedom of speech, what is healthy environment on, on internet or digital platform anywhere, uh, uh, of any kind, and what is not. Or, or see the consequences of your hate speech, for example, on the other person in the, physical. The, the, the true consequences is that we build the, the, the attitude in society that is not acceptable. And it is possible, it is doable, because just a hundred years ago, it was widely acceptable to have a slave, especially if you are a slave owner. It's very nice to have a slave. I mean, it's, it's cheap, you do everything, and you can kill him, you can sell him, whatever. And then there were laws that was forbidding having slaves, that were forbidding behaving people uh, to promote slavery. And finally, a lot of uh, changes in our, in our social model that slavery is not acceptable. The same we, we did with women's rights, with, uh, with people with disability, with racism, with everything. Now it's time to do it with, with digital evil all around because they have fun while spreading evil on digital platform. Yes, yeah, or profit. Or profit. Not to, th that can be punished yeah. very clearly and very yeah. <laughs> loudly. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Giannini, who are the partners for the implementation of this Curriculum. You mentioned some of them. You mentioned schools. You mentioned, I think, private companies. And what would be uh, their benefit in promoting the, the media 
the media literacy? Yes, I think that uh, the, the main issue uh, uh, we have to, to underline is the importance of taking this collective responsibility. Uh, it's not a, a standing alone project. Uh, it touches upon uh, uh, education, of course, uh, as education being uh, uh, the main driver for uh, building uh, uh, a new uh, kind of mindset and uh, giving uh, uh, young generation, uh, as well as adults, uh, of course, uh, a new kind of awareness uh, uh, which can be useful uh, to uh, actively participate uh, based on a, on a human right uh, approach uh, to, uh, to build a, a better society. Having said that, uh, I think that uh, uh, this uh, these, uh, approach uh, we are presenting through this uh, media literacy curriculum, uh, which is the UNESCO approach to education, by the way, is a, is a lifelong and society-wide. And the media information literacy is a societal-wide responsibility. I think that uh, this is a bit uh, the framework we have to, to, to take into account, to understand the, the, the potential impact of this, uh, of this initiative. Uh, this lifelong and life-wide perspective uh, is a uh, fully uh, embedded in, uh, uh, in uh, Sustainable Development Goal 4, in, uh, in the, uh, the quality inclusive education for all, uh, one of the most uh, amazing ambition uh, of the 2030 agenda. And the, and the digital revolution somehow uh, only accelerates the need for this. Uh, that's what we are living now, especially uh, in, the, in the midst still of this, uh, of this pandemic. And there is no age limit, uh, let me say, to learn how to better navigate uh, complexity and to engage online safely and responsibly. Uh, that's why uh, this curriculum uh, has been designed with lifelong settings in mind, including uh, educational training, community centers, youth organization, uh, new, new news media, and digital communication companies and more. Uh, so it's not uh, uh, um, a, a simple educational uh, uh, project program, so to say, it's a real uh, 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 common uh, civil society uh, can play uh, an influential role in raising awareness on the importance uh, of these topics. And uh, already mentioned before, the private sector uh, we know that uh, big companies uh, uh, are definitely responsible of uh, uh, providing uh, platforms, uh, uh, online uh, uh, infrastructures. Uh, definitely during this pandemic, uh, education uh, systems uh, all around the world uh, uh, could rely uh, mostly on uh, uh, online learning and teaching. And uh, this is an important uh, tool we have uh, but the more we leverage technology, the more uh, we must uh, uh, clarify the new responsibilities we have. And uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, um, global citizenship uh, uh, um, uh, objective uh, of the SDG4 is now uh, not simply a, a governmental responsibility, and educational uh, uh, communities responsibility is something which goes beyond. And that's why this uh, long, uh, life, lifelong learning and, uh, and, uh, and life-wide perspective and framework is very much uh, innovative and very much important. Can, can I follow up with a question? It is for both of you, but I'd like you to understand to, uh, to answer first. What is the relationship between formal and non-formal uh, education, and especially what is the importance of this curriculum in meeting the goals? When we know that with the formal uh, education you can uh, have the program that everybody will follow, but with non-formal education it is quite different. 
I think uh, the, the context is different, right? As you, as you, as you underline, uh, what is not different is the purpose of uh, the uh, implementation of uh, this media literacy curriculum. That means that uh, in the classroom, uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, it's about uh, uh, including uh, uh, a special attention to, to, to some specific topics. Let me let me give you a concrete example. Uh, um, Madam Minister mentioned before hate speech. Hate speech, unfortunately, is a, is an important dimension of. Uh, of the uh, of the current uh, uh, common narrative we we we, we hear and uh, some uh, uh, unfortunate contribute to build on, uh, especially amplified by social media. Uh, well, to address its speech effectively, the first starting point is uh, the importance of uh, uh, language. Uh, the importance of uh, the value of words and giving uh, children and or uh, adults, learners, uh, uh, this kind of awareness and knowledge and competencies. Uh, language matters, definitely. And uh, you can kill <laughs> somehow, metaphorically speaking, of course, uh, uh, another person uh, uh, through, uh, through aggressive uh, 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 verbal attacks, and this is the first part, the first, uh, the starting part, many times uh, of a different kind of violence, which can go beyond the language. So uh, this, uh, uh, just to say that uh, linguistic knowledge and competences uh, must be developed uh, as much as possible in order to give uh, uh, learners uh, this uh, ability I mentioned before to navigate and to understand uh, which, are, which are the boundaries between, uh, uh, between uh, different uh, semantic clusters they can find uh, when they, when they, when they are uh, navigating uh, online uh, in many different uh, contexts. Uh, and this is the, about the formal education, namely. But if we move to uh, uh, education uh, uh, beyond uh, schools, beyond the schooling, and uh, we, we, we are taking uh, in, into account uh, the importance of communities, the importance of uh, uh, the, the influence of civil society, uh, I mentioned before, I think that uh, this is, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the implementation of uh, of this uh, guidance uh, that the me media literacy curriculum uh, implies uh, uh, must be uh, must be uh, run differently, uh, and this is about uh, uh, putting in practice, uh, for instance, uh, new rules uh, uh, which can uh, uh, which can uh, forbid uh, the uh, you see we see on the social media uh, uh, aggression. Uh, and uh, using uh, uh, different uh, uh, and uh, and uh, dangerous uh, uh, language. So uh, the same content can be used differently for the same purpose. I think that uh, this is a bit uh, the principle which is behind uh, uh, the idea of uh, uh, life-wide and uh, and uh, so uh, comprehensive approach to media literacy uh, and uh, i think it's uh, really quite timely to uh, kick off this discussion now and uh, i see a promising horizon to develop uh, this kind of new uh, partnership around the same uh, common responsibility we have but the minister Informal the, the, and non-formal. Yes, yeah. and about the curriculum, how it yeah. can help yeah. in, in formal and non-formal education. Using sustainable development goals, and I'll give you an example. Uh, Madam Prime Minister had an idea that is work in progress for Serbia to start to write strategy and developing plan for Serbia 2030. And it will be done with working group in parity, half of governmental persons and half of civic society. And this is the tool for 2030 uh, because we want to share the idea of using this curriculum and invent Serbia 2030, uh, re uh, reminding everyone that uh, Martin Luther King 
his famous speech didn't start it with, I have a nightmare, but with, I have a dream. So our work will be to ask everyone, what's your dream about Serbia 2030? What do you want so school, internet, street, traffic, media look like for a child that will go to the first grade of the primary school on 2030? That child is not born yet and will not be born for another two years. His father and mother just having fun. So, but there will be a child and it's up to us to now use this curriculum, use the idea of sustainable development goal to create the world that that child, when he or she is born and goes to the first grade says, oh, this is nice. There is no, uh, any nasty thing around me. I am a happy child. Uh, it may, may sound humorous to you, but it's doable. That's what sustainable development goals are all about. To introduce the tools like this, uh, the work of the great people, brilliant um, teachers of UNESCO and brilliant experts to use the knowledge as it is. You don't have to invent what to do. There is a recipe. And uh, our dialogues about uh, how Serbia should look like in 2030 will go across the line of democratic and, and, uh, and uh, on, human, on the culture of human rights based society that says, yes, I know that there is a strong wish in you to pollute the internet, to provoke with hate speech, to hurt someone, but we don't like it. It's not acceptable anymore. Why? Because the kid that will go to the first grade on 2030 should live without what we are living now with. Yes, but let's, let's return to 2021, to present days. Yep. How does the lack of media information literacy endanger human rights? Uh, because it fools you. And there are a group of people who like to be fooled because you are, uh, you are feeling as a you know, part of the group, member of the union, if you are fooled that you should be nasty or uh, spread uh, conspiracy theories about vaccines or lying, clearly lying, but they like you. And that's a kind of a, a lack of dialogue of social intelligence in, in what uh, a, a socialization of people should be. You should not gather around the evil, however the evil things are banal and uh, very easy to, to accept. You should gather around the true values. And that's why we need sustainable goals. That's why we need United Nations, UNESCO, European Union, because it's time for all of us to revisit what human rights, what culture of human rights are all about. Uh, before 1948, it did not exist. We don't remember how it was, but it was worse than today. So uh, we are kind of uh, got used to that we have human rights and uh, that there are values all around and, and, and we obey the, the basic social rules, but it's not true. And part of this curriculum should be also human rights revisited. And, uh, and the beauty of treating whoever different from you is a human being, to treat him as a human being, whoever he or she may be. That kind of, of world is what we uh, deserve finally. So, to, so it has to, to be inte integrated. It is integrated in this curriculum. It's, it's, it's basic. It's basic because it's, it's all about human rights uh, in, in, in media and, and uh, uh, information literacy. It's, it's about the basic principles of human rights. Don't lie, treat other person with respect, tell truth in public sphere, give arguments, have dialogue based on facts, check your facts, um, make people uh, accept the basic skills that enables them to differ uh, wrong from, from right. That's, that's yes. all about human rights. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Giannini, just for the, for the very end, uh, I, I would like to hear one, uh, one thing that, uh, we missed to, uh, uh, to mention, it is the role of the libraries, which is not very often mentioned about, uh, about media information literacy. What is the, the role of the libraries in this? The, sorry, the role, the role of, of the, the libraries. Libraries? Yes. Well, uh, it's about the role of culture, I should say. Uh, and uh, I think it's a fundamental one. Uh, I think that uh, uh, 
we, we mentioned before uh, what we are doing uh, uh, and, and the, the curriculum, uh, media literacy curriculum is a, is a piece of this puzzle, uh, is, a, is a building ecos an ecosystem where libraries are a fundamental part, in my opinion. And uh, this uh, ecosystem definitely uh, must uh, guarantee uh, the right to information uh, and uh, protect fundamental freedoms and human integrity. So I think that uh, uh, the ethical dimension uh, alongside the human rights approach is the ground of what, uh, what we are launching and promoting today. And uh, as uh, many, Madam Minister said, uh, I mean, everything is there. The, the, the beautiful dream of uh, SDGs is definitely about that. Uh, it's about uh, building uh, a new model of development to have uh, a, a society which can take care of uh, the planet, prosperity, and people. And uh, about people uh, and about the relationship between people uh, respect, dignity, uh, telling the truth, and uh, distinguish between the fake and the truth, and uh, uh, protecting uh, the right to information uh, and the freedom of expression uh, are absolutely basic pillars of, uh, of this exercise we are doing. Thank you. Thank you both for your contribution and ideas on this panel. It was enlightening and useful. Thank you. Uh, please be reminded where you may look for the curriculum. You can see the uh, address on the page. This is not the end of our activity on this issue. We will hold four international webinars presenting various case studies from MIL experts and practitioners, as well as other experts on April 27th and 29th. Thank you for watching us.